good morning ladies and gentlemen i i hope i'm audible first of all i would like to thank the organizer for uh, organizing this beautiful event and uh, inviting me as a speaker uh the discussion the topic that i have been given is basically you know i mean in today's context it is very important we uh, we 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 see that lot of hospitals are coming up across the country uh, uh entrepreneurial initiatives are increasing in the healthcare sector more and more doctors are now coming up and setting up their own hospitals the concept of single specialty day care facilities are gaining lot of momentum apart from the conventional multi specialty hospitals and uh, now it is it is all more important for us to understand Uh, that uh, there are norms there are guidelines that we need to follow while designing the hospital to make it a effective and efficient facility so going forward my presentation will revolve around like how do we integrate quality and design uh, in achieving our objective of better patient care while we talk about quality the the most important uh, one of the you know query or one of the worry that uh, is there in the minds of the promoters is cost whether we are incurring more cost if we are talking about quality in healthcare facility so we'll also try to address this in the perspective of quality hospital design then we'll try, uh, discuss about the steps that we need to take while designing a hospital in a professional manner so going forward to start of my presentation i start with this uh quote of florence nightingale we all know her that the first requirement in a hospital is to do no harm so that is very important that we do no harm to patients the patients get admitted in hospitals for treatment and uh, it is the primary duty that the patient doesn't get any harm in the hospital now let us look at some statistics if we see countries developed countries like canada there the medical errors happen one in 10 adults cataract contract infection in hospital hospital acquired infection or nasocomial infection is something that we always hear about and in canada also in developed countries like canada there are this is prevalent one in 10 patients receive wrong medication or wrong dose so these kind of adverse events actually are the causes of more deaths than you know the disease itself so what does it mean it means that we need to have safe hospitals when we are talking about safe uh, when we are talking about quality in healthcare there are different components to it one of the component is the safe infrastructure second component is qualified and trained manpower third is standardization of systems and processes out of these components what we are discussing today is the safe hospital environment safe and efficient hospital environment so this is one of the component for achieving quality in hospital so let us discuss why is this very important in today's context 
why we are talking more on hospital planning and designing hospitals have been built over you know last uh, uh, many many years probably from late 70s early 80s private hospitalization scenario has gained momentum obviously i mean the first two decades did not see a lot of private hospitals but after that late 90s and then in this millennium it has uh, uh, we see that there are a lot of private hospitals coming up. Hospital design as a science has never uh, gained momentum as it is gaining momentum now in this today's context. Previously, it was all thought that we are doctors, we are surgeons, and uh, we know how to design an operation theater, how to design an ICU, how to design a hospital. But designing a facility, healthcare facility, is not the job of one single person that the doctor will sit with an architect and they will explain how it is done. There are a multitude of people on expertise required in achieving the desired result. So some of the, I, I, may, I may have skipped some of the things, but I've tried to cover the parameters which are very much required and applicable while we talk about designing hospitals. One is regulatory. Whenever we are building hospitals nowadays, we see that there are regulatory framework that we need to adhere to. We talk about local building bylaws, we talk about national building code, which are very low-lying minimum standards that we need to follow related to you know fire safety related to the services and facilities that we need to be there that needs to be there then we have accreditation bodies again accreditation bodies like NABH, NABL so we need to have quality assurance certification and that again in the last if I would say one last decade or so uh, the sensitization of having accreditation in hospitals, whether it is smaller or large facilities, have gone to uh, from the metros and non-metros to tier two, tier three cities and towns as well, because it gives the promoters uh, you know, a better sense of a facility as well as some incentive because of empanelments with insurance companies and all. So again, uh, when we have to adhere to these standards, design has to be in, done according to the standards. User perspective, people are becoming more aware uh, in terms of the spending capacity also it has improved in India, across India. And people are more demanding when they go to the healthcare facility. Earlier it was like Dr. Bhagwan hai, the concept has changed. They say that we are paying and we are out to get better services, better facilities, and that's why I think that uh, uh, it is all more important that we design hospitals to look and feel better. Again, nowadays, uh, staff, again, if we see the scenario of availability of staff, manpower in healthcare sector, it is still, you know, we are reeling very behind. There is a lot of lack, uh, gap. So it is all more important that we give them a safe environment in the hospital so that they stay with us. The nursing uh, fraternity, the, uh, you know, the paramedical staff, all these people stay for longer period of time in a hospital giving care to the patients. And uh, their, you know, workspaces should be well done. Uh, we should not compromise on those. If we compromise on these kind of things, then it will reflect on their, you know, relationship with the patients, which will affect the patient outcome. So, again, obviously for the promoters, I have already mentioned that accreditation is important. All hospitals need to stay in the ahead in the market competition. We see that 
the likes of Apollo and Emirates are coming to smaller cities and obviously they have a brand and new entrepreneurs need to need to build their facilities such that people are attracted and people feel that they are not you know not in a place which is not up to the mark again cost efficiency is very important when we are talking about hospitals uh, while we design hospitals while we uh, build a hospital the cost is one of the major aspect so if we are doing an efficient design of a hospital we can save on a lot of cost things are changing healthcare is very dynamic there are a lot of innovations happening lot of new technology coming up demand is increasing in the market so we need to see that we need to have future proofing we need to have futuristic planning and uh, one of the word that we hear is modular plan so that we see that when we build hospitals we see that what kind of market demand can increase and we keep provision for those in our hospitals so when we talk about quality in hospital design mostly we discuss about you know few aspects we say that we have to adhere to nabh they talk about you know the i'm saying in terms of general perspective they say about modular ot they say about better you know hepa filters and good icus corridor width and all these things but then it is hospital design and if we talk about quality in proper sense it is not only limited to do this you know keywords when we talk about uh, quality design then we should talk about evidence based design we should talk about uh, design according to that location and the uh, consumer perspective so there are six quality aims that we need to keep in mind while we design a hospital so these are the six quality aims and in the middle of everything is the patient so everything what we do the design should be patient centric the environment should be safe for the patients it should be efficient effective services should be we should design the hospital in such a way that we uh, provide services in a timely manner and equitable services to all so how do let us take some examples of uh, hospital design uh, features that we can think about if we talk about the first thing that is the patient centeredness we say about you know like we we nowadays we talk about more of single occupancy rooms because single occupancy rooms leads to you know better patient outcome lesser noise lesser cross infection privacy and since hospitals are in uh, patients are enabled by insurance and all they have the capacity to you know they 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 prefer more of single specialty rooms so this is uh this is uh, i mean this is the context uh, this is what we it is practiced as of now ensuring sufficient space to accommodate family members which is believed to improve the treatment outcome of the patients i'll give an example narayana started this uh, practice narayana health that they train the patient attendant to certain extent that when they are admitted to the hospital so that the patient attendant can take care of the generic needs of the patient and they don't need to keep on calling the nurse which save on the lot of time of the nurses so we need to give proper facilities for the patient attendants in the uh, facility again another example is we need to have proper navigation signage is for the patients in the hospital so that they can navigate well one of the example of you know better patient care i was talking about like we need to have well lit rooms we need to have space for the attendants not only you know like uh, bed but also working space most of the people nowadays work on their system so so we can keep a space for their system 
workstation. So this is patient centeredness. Uh, these are some examples of being patient centered in the uh, in our design approach. Second is patient safety. Hospital acquired infection, as I have mentioned, is one of the major causes for complications in patients. So use of proper ventilation and air conditioning system is absolutely important. We need to follow a lot of guidelines. There are S-ray guidelines, S-ray guidelines, which we need to follow. Surfaces are of utmost importance. What surfaces we are using in the hospitals. And mostly we need to be very careful while we are uh, choosing the surfaces in the invasive areas or critical areas, high risk areas like OT, ICU, lab and all. It should be easily decontaminated. Facilitating hand washing um, stations, adequate one, hand washing stations. Then preventing patient and provider injury. Again, uh, we talk about you know hand grabs and all in the toilets. Uh, I mean, these are very simple topics, but these are very important while we talk about patient safety. Uh, we talk about you know nurse, call, call system in the toilet. We know about in the uh, bits, but also in the toilet when the patient is there alone, and then then we need to also have proper zoning of the critical areas. So uh, if we design the critical areas by zoning it into different uh, you know protective clean sterile areas, then we try to minimize the risk of cross infection. So air conditioning, zoning, material, all these are very important aspects for having safe environment in a hospital. These are some examples. Previously, we used to use a lot of tile, tiling material. Nowadays, we are using seamless you know, uh, surfaces like vinyl. Then again, when we talk about air conditioning, traditionally, we used to use you know, split air conditioning or windows, AC. It is still prevalent in a lot of smaller towns and uh, facilities. And those, you know, basically when we are here, it is basically trying to only, the air conditioning is only controlling the temperature and the humidity. But when you are talking about the healthcare facility where patients are there with infection or uh, the risk of infection is there, then we need to have proper air changes. We need to have proper filtration. Um, and there need to be a pressure gradient. These are different aspects that we need to add to the comfort cooling thing that we, need, we, we usually have in any setting. So this is not possible in the traditional kind of uh, installations. Uh, we need to have properly designed air conditioning system in hospital. Isolation rooms, we have, uh, isolation room has gained more momentum after the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, there are two kind of isolation rooms. We, we need to have isolation rooms for infectious patients as well as for immunocompromised patients we can have like uh, so this is uh, also very an important part of having safe environment in the hospital. But the third aim, the quality aim in designing hospital is having an effective um, healthcare setup. When we talk about healthcare setup, whenever a patient walks into a hospital, they are very confused. They are, you know, uh, they, they feel that uh, uh, they are not uh, sure about the outcome. They come with a lot of expectations, but they come with a lot of fear. So we, the hospital should be welcoming in look and nature. It should not smell or feel like a hospital. We don't need to have, you know, like the those typical uh, spelling hospitals. So uh, one of the study says that, uh, and then we, need, we, 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 we talk about green hospitals. We talk about, you know, what, what does that mean? So we need to have proper, you know, like we need to encourage more of natural light. So if we encourage natural light, one is that it will reduce the dependence on our power artificial lights and then also uh, it, it, it aids to the healing of the patients. So one study says that naturally lit rooms took fewer painkillers than those in darker rooms. 
leading to a 21% reduction in medication cost. Studies we don't have being done in India. It is mostly done in Western countries. But I'm sure that if we do it in here, then also we'll understand that there is a lot of, you know, advantage of doing, you know, having such interventions. So, uh, design of hospitals should take patient psychological need into account. Then I was talking about uh, giving enough, uh, you know, uh, adequate facilities and uh, spaces for the staff, like lounges, restrooms, change rooms, dining area, and all. It it helps them to concentrate on their work, that dealing with the patients, and uh, they, it will keep them less distracted. Uh, so th this is an example of you know like connecting patients to the nature. We talk about healing gardens in patients uh, in hospitals, access to daylight. Then we talk about um, um, you know like as I told that it should not smell and look like a typical hospital. So the fourth aim is efficiency. The efficiency uh, uh, efficiency will come. So one of the example that we have taken here is that the hospital is very complex. We have so many departments, but then the departments work in tandem with each other. There are a lot of interrelated activities that happens. So we need to club the act, uh, departments in such a way that there is synchronization. There is less movement of staff, or optimal, I would say, optimal movement of staff. Uh, so effective hospital planning promotes staff efficiency by minimizing distance of necessary travel between frequently used spaces. So it can be achieved by clubbing functionally adjacent areas. So very, you know, common examples like when we are talking about, uh, uh, you know, designing a ground floor of a hospital, we need to have easily accessible outpatient department, we need to have diagnostic facilities attached to that, we need to have emergency, having a separate demarcated entry, they should have proper access to the diagnostic department. So very, I mean, I'm sure most of you are much aware about all these things. Uh, similarly, in the surgical, uh, you know, department, apart from the operation theater, we, in the operation theater complex, we need to have adjacency to the CSSD for uh, easy transfer of stale, uh, materials for sterilization, as well as intensive care for patient transfer post-surgery. The fifth uh, aim is basically providing timely service to the patients. So one of the examples that I would like to give is when we are designing uh, hospitals, so uh, the, uh, basically the patient wards, so what happens is that the patient wards are designed in a manner where if we are keeping the nurse station in one corner and then it is basically, you know, it, it doesn't help. If you take the example of this design, the nurse stations are being kept in one end and this is, this positioning leads to, uh, you know, patient, uh, the nurse needs to frequent to all the beds. And if we have, have a centrally placed nurse station, then it helps for better monitoring of the patients. So this is not mindful planning. This is not mindful design. We should avoid this kind of things, which is not patient centric and which doesn't allow us to give uh, in patient and, uh, so the the sixth and the last uh, component uh, is uh, equity so what th that means that we need to provide uh, we need to design the hospital in such a manner that the services are being provided in a equi equitable manner to all according to the condition uh, disease condition of the patients so these are the six uh, uh, quality aims that we need to take into account while designing a hospital. And uh, the last thing that I would like to say is about the business case. That is, when we talk about quality in design, whether we are incurring more cost. So uh, 
uh, it is often perceived that it is not non-economical. When we are talking about so many things to be done while designing a hospital, then we feel that it's, it is non-economical. But uh, central to the business case is the need to balance one-time construction cost against operating savings and revenue enhancements. So some of the examples are like this, that cost savings over a period of time, if we are doing a quality design, will accrue from all these things. That is, we are reducing infection, so the bed turnover rate will be faster, we can admit more patients, we can see more patients. Eliminating, eliminating unnecessary patient transfer, which leads to better patient satisfaction. Minimizing patient falls, again, this is one of the major, uh, we, we need to avoid this. Lowering drug cost, average length of stay needs to be reduced, can be reduced, lessening employee turnover rate and thereby, you know, improving the pay, staff satisfaction and improving market share and philanthropy. So these are, these are uh, you know, like aspects which we will, uh, which we have to keep in mind uh, and this will actually help us in reducing the operational cost of a hospital. So, uh, I mean, uh, this is what I wanted to speak about the, uh, the, the uh, when we, when, when, we, when the, uh, you know, like, topic was coined, the science behind designing a hospital. The science is the, what are the parameters that we keep in mind while designing a hospital so that we have a cost-effective facility. So this is what I, start. I think I'm over with my time, right? Yes, time is, no, I think I'm done, thank you. Dr. Uh, uh, the steps in designing a hospital. So, you know, most of the promoters, they have a lot of queries in their mind, like how do I start, where do I start, what type of hospital it should be, what it will cost, what are the licenses required. So there's so many things to be answered. And uh, while we do that, we have to do it in such a way that we have to meet the expectations of various stakeholders. Uh, for the patients and the community, it should be a place that gives hope, a place that comes alive. For the hospital staff, as we have already discussed, that it should be a technically and functionally efficient and safe environment for the uh, staff to work there. And for the investors and promoters, it should be safe, efficient, modern, beautiful, and economically viable hospital. So in our organization at Integra, we aim to create hospitals that heal, are beautiful, and safe. And uh, so what are the steps? So there are, we have divided into three areas. One is defining the hospital configuration. So when we talk about, uh, uh, I mean, the first step is basically what kind of, uh, whenever we need to understand the gap in the market. Wherever we are trying to build a hospital, we need to understand uh, what is the gap. And accordingly, we need to do a market assessment and a techno-commercial feasibility study. And then we prepare a business plan to, uh, to develop our road, road ahead. So once we understand that what will be the service mix, specialty mix, facility mix, then we know that the next step is to organize the fund. So most of the entrepreneurs need to understand like how do they organize the fund. So based on the business plan that we have prepared, that is the evidence-based business plan, we need to uh, present it to various investors. It can be banks, it can be any other, you know, like uh, co-investors. And determine the equity and debt mix, what the promoters can bring in, and then how much debt they need to take from the market, uh, from the investors. And then negotiate with the financial institution, and then finalize the, uh, you know, funding aspect of it. So we need, we have a business plan, we have the funding in place. The next is plan and develop. So while we need to plan and develop, the first thing is that we need to prepare a medical program. And then according to the medical program, we need to prepare the architectural brief and design the facility. In designing, there are various aspects. 
the medical planning and architecture, the structure and engineering services, the interiors. Once that is done, parallelly we need to have, uh, we need to prepare the equipment and the manpower plan for the hospital. Then tendering and construction happens. We need to have a proper PMC team to monitor the construction. And finally we commission and then go for the quality assurance. So these are the steps in building the hospital. Uh, while we design a hospital, it, as we have already discussed, that it cannot be the job of one person. Uh, it is a multidisciplinary, it should be a multidisciplinary approach uh, while we design the hospitals. We have first discussed about the detailed project report as we have spoken that we need to identify the market needs, finalization of the facility mix, appropriate type and size of the facility, and accordingly then we start preparing the architect's brief. The architect's brief is very important. The brief is actually prepared by the planner and based on the discussion with the client and the market information, we prepare the architect's brief. This architect's brief is, you know, trans translated into the design. So the translation happens. The step, first step is we prepare a space program for each and every department. So we provide department-wise, you know, space programs, which are then converted into, again, one of the important aspects is site selection and analysis. So what should be the size? And while deciding the size, like, uh, as we have discussed about the local bylaws, so what is the FSI, what is the height restriction, what are the other statutory requirements that we need to fulfill. Then, after the space programming is done, the conceptual plan, and then the stack, stacking plan, like what all facilities we will be keeping in each and every floor, and what are the relationship, the horizontal relationship, the vertical relationship with various departments. Also, we need to look, keep into account the phasing of the hospital. If we are building a 200 bed facility, we can invest it in two phases, 100 bed and then, but we need to keep the provision for the expansion in a seamless manner. Once the stacking plan is done, then we do the zoning. Zoning is like in its every, every uh, floor, what are all the departments that we need to keep. That is the zoning of the site and the zoning of the plan. Some of the uh, principles that we need to keep in design is that when we are talking about hospital design, we, all, we always talk about first the function. If we are talking about other buildings, we talk about how good it should look. But in hospital, it is the first the functionally, it should be functionally efficient. And then we talk about the aesthetic part. So optimal space utilization space, if we are uh, planning the hospital in optimal space, then we are not only saving on the capital expenditure, but on a lot, on lot of operational expenses. So construction of cost-effective infrastructure executed in compliance with pre-planned timelines. Again, when we are designing and uh, executing project, if we are doing it on time, then we save on a lot of opportunity cost. Hospital needs to be, uh, I have already spoken about this, that it needs to be environment friendly, efficient building. It leads to a lot of cost savings in terms of power. Power is one of the major uh, cost center in a hospital. Patient and staff friendly designs, as we have discussed that it will accrue to a lot of cost savings over a period of time. And obviously we need to uh, design it in adherence to national and international standards based upon the location that we are designing and the preference of the promoter. So our, uh, another aspect that we need to keep in mind is the planning grid it is very important. Most of, a lot of times we are asked to design hospitals within a framework where already a structure is there. Again, uh, there are constraints because when we have to design hospitals like operation theaters, ICUs and all, we need to have proper grids. We need to have proper uh, heights so that we can accommodate all the services properly. So these are things when we are doing greenfield projects, new projects, then we can keep all these things into mind and do it accordingly. 
So finally, you know, the different steps, uh, I mean, it leads to the conceptual architectural plan followed by the service designs of air conditioning, electrical, plumbing, firefighting, medical gas pipelines, then the working drawings, interior design and signage development. So these are different aspects. At Integra, in our organization, we have been doing this since last 11 years. And uh, this is one of the, you know, like case study of a 100-bed facility. Uh, probably we can skip, it's not related to the. So some key takeaways that I wanted to emphasize on is uh, when, we are when we are building a hospital, the first thing is that team, the promoter team, should have the right vision. And it's very important, and the vision should be well understood by the consultant so that it can be translated into a, a, in an efficient building. Dedicate, educate time in planning. Most of the times we hurry up during the planning and designing stage. And that leads to a lot of issues in the facility. So we need to provide adequate time, spend adequate, uh, invest adequate time in planning of the facility. As we have discussed, that evidence-based design will help us to stay ahead in the market. We know that the market, I mean, the corporates, the structured hospitals, the chains are coming to all the places. If we have to keep, stay ahead in the market, we need to uh, also build functionally efficient hospitals. Project investment should be rationalized. What we, uh, you know, like, it can be a secondary hospital built in Delhi or a tertiary. Will be, uh, the cost investment will be quite different from a tier one, tier two, tier three, than a metro. So we need to keep in mind the, uh, um, you know, paying capacity or the market dynamics while designing a, uh, while you know, uh, the investment that we are going to do in a hospital. Because the return on investment will come based on the market. So we need to keep in mind the market dynamics while designing a facility. Again, uh, this is a message to the hospital promoters that they need to, they need to focus on their core strength, that is their clinical strength. And then they delegate the work right from development of the facility to managing the facility to the right people. So these are few key takeaways that I wanted to leave you all with. Thank you so much for your patient hearing.